You're watching The Trailblazers, an ambitious 15-part series backed by Telefonica where we discover millennials whose tech ventures have the potential to drive meaningful social good. This time, we found a young inventor obsessed with the world of bionics. Now, this is a field that many of us may find too high-tech for our understanding, but our trailblazer, Oliver, is determined to make it accessible for amputees who've lost a limb by taking the pain out of wearing prosthetics in a very significant way. Now, his company wants to do this by creating a permanently integrated smart device that acts as the interface between an amputated stump and any prosthetic. I mean, Shivy, it just blows my mind. The person making this happen is one half of a dynamic duo. Oliver Armitage is the co-founder and director of Cambridge Bio Augmentation Systems. Now, he's got a great single-minded, ambitious vision to make bionics more accessible and helpful to those who wear prosthetics. And Danny, Oliver is a natural builder and creator ever since he's been a kid, actually. He's wanted to do something with bionics since he was 17. I'm so impressed by the vision he has for his invention, but more importantly, the transformative impact that something like this could have for amputees worldwide. You know what? I'm going to let him tell you firsthand exactly how he plans to do this. Oliver, thanks for being on The Trailblazers. It's lovely to be here. So can I call you Oli? Yeah, that's fine. That's what your friends call you. Uh, yeah, mostly. Okay, so listen, Oli, you made our cut because what you're working on, field of bionics, it's not casual stuff. Tremendous social good value here. So let's just dive straight in by getting you to describe to us in palatable terms what the product is. So we're making an implanted medical device for amputees. So it inserts into the end of an amputated limb and allows for a standardized way of connecting prosthetics. Right now, patients have a customised socket, which despite being quite expensive um, and sort of time consuming to make, is actually very uncomfortable and causes a lot of medical issues on the remaining stump. So by having a standardised connection, we can get rid of that pain and allow access to these sort of high-end bionic devices that really improve people's lives. So Oli, why bionics? A lot of people will be asking this. And also, was there a pivotal moment that sparked the idea? So um, I've been wanting to make integrated bionic devices since I was about 17. Um, and in reality, I've really wanted to make the part that integrates those technological aspects with the body. Um, I did the undergraduate degree I did and the PhD I did for that reason. And about two years ago during my PhD, I realized that sort of an invention I had of my own in combination with some other existing technology out there meant that actually this device, which I've been sketching on sort of napkins and bar places for about five years is actually possible. And so we started doing it. So Ollie, it's in prototype stage at the moment. What are the plans for the near future? Yeah, so it's in prototype, as you said. It will be entering animal trials in the early stages of next year. And the first in human could be around early 2018. Wonderful, so not that far off. Yeah, not hugely far away. So Oli, what we always like to do is also get under the skin of the technology behind the product. So talk us through what tech this product is actually based on. So under the skin is actually a pretty apt phrase. The skin really is the key here. Um, bone integrated prosthetic connectors have been around for about 15 years. They're called osseo integrated. But they've not really seen widespread use because they have serious infection problems where the skin meets uh, the device as it passes out of the body. So um, the technology we're really focused around, the core of what we do, is um, based around allowing that skin to integrate with the device and create an infection free seal where nothing can really pass through that barrier. So Oli, presumably a product like this in the sort of health tech industry and medicine is going to have quite a few issues alongside it in terms of developing it and bringing it to market. What are some of those problems, do you think? So there's a lot of regulatory standards, quite obviously with medical devices, to make sure they're really safe for patients before they hit the market. Um, and so what that means is we have to do a huge amount now before we've ever even got into an animal trial of sort of document control and things to really show that we can meet regulatory standards. Um, especially as the regulatory standards in the US and the EU are completely different and you have to meet both of them at the same time. So Oli, I want to switch tracks now and bring out what makes you tick as a person. Right, so I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. Now you come across as quite impulsive and a little excitable. Are you like that in your personal life as well? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I think to sort of think about doing a technology like this, you have to sort of really think big and ignore a lot of things that other people would say are reasons you can't do it. Uh, and I'm definitely like that with just about everything else as well. I mean, I don't know if it's the most impulsive thing I've ever done, but recently on about three days notice, I decided to do a 120 mile overnight cycle that I was in no way trained for. But it was quite fun, so it was worth it. How did that pan out? Uh, we got there, you know, I didn't die in the way, had a swim in the sea in the morning. 
So would you say that you're quite a creator and builder, given you want to do this since you were 17? Uh, yeah, definitely. I sort of create and build things all the time. It's sort of just what I do. Uh, I can't really stop. And what if you had to create something quite quirky for yourself, rather than something that could change the world, as you are doing? What might that be? I've actually always wanted to start a um, like uh, one of those little faux stands you get in like Far East Asia, where they have like those carts on the side of the road where like they have the big bowl of soup and the big bowl of like just hot water they cook noodles in and then just things on a shelf and they throw them all in the bowl because I love that food and I'd love to have that. Maybe but. you can moonlight <laughs> as a yeah. purveyor of Vietnamese food. They say every entrepreneur is supposed to have their own like restaurant idea so that's mine. Go figure. <laughs> well I know that I'll be coming to your little stand and keeping an eye on everything that you're doing. Oli thanks for being on the Trailblazers it was really fun having you on board and I hope that your product really develops into something that hits the market and changes the lives of amputees across the world. Thanks, it was great to be here. So, I'm here at the Future Business Centre in Cambridge to speak to John to see how this innovation could impact his life. John, thank you so much for joining me today. It's a pleasure to be with you here. How difficult is it without kind of these tools that we'll go on to explain later? The sports that I could do, I could kick a football, but not very easily. Mm. Whereas with technology, I can do a little bit more. Mm. And with these guys, I'm really excited by the possibility of being able to do more. The sockets themselves, and if you put it on yeah, now, actually, while I'm talking, um, um, it's a bit of a secret how to get it on. Um, the arm itself is pretty standard. But what isn't standard is how then you um, can, once I've got this on, you can see that the tennis, table tennis bat is actually held on by a clamp. So in terms of the impact that the PID can have, I mean, it, it explain what the change would be. Well, I'm really grateful to Ollie and Emil because the connector would allow us to take off the bat and the, the hockey stick and put them on much more easily and far less clunkily like than this. And it could be useful in all sorts of different ways, not just in sport, but uh, elsewise. Having a, a connector that just is quick release and easy to put on and off. And we're going to be playing table tennis later, so do you fancy your chances? Oh, definitely. <laughs> Especially my backhand. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll the, the fancy move. Oliver is slowly but surely using the power of a high-tech area like bionics to create something accessible and hugely helpful for amputees. We're definitely going to keep an eye out for it when it hits the market. I said it earlier on that he's nothing if not ambitious and I hope you guys have been able to see that firsthand. Absolutely. This has been another episode of The Trailblazers. Thanks for tuning in. I'm sorry, when I start laughing, I can't stop. And this one starts giggling as well. Oliver, thanks for being on the Trailblazers. That's where you... Oh! <laughs> You've not a chance. Oh, fine. I he was like... <laughs> okay. <laughs> as a person. You look so serious. <laughs> sorry. He's sort of like, no, don't do I just this. try to manically think about what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> I'm being like, uh... <laughs> you have to think... We're very Give excited. Give us a clap. Give us a clap, Ollie. Yeah! We're all very excited here. Pumped. <laughs> Thierry's here, <laughs> Thierry's chilling here. out. So I'm here at the Future Business Centre in Cambridge to speak to John about this house. <laughs> <laughs>